You didn't tell me we had such a tasty new neighbor. Keep it in your pants, Samson. We gotta go. Hey, what's a new girl like? I think she needs her temperature taken with an all-beef thermometer. <laughs> Welcome to Second Class Cinema, the show where we watch a B-movie and immediately discuss. I'm Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey, Eric. That's Eric. I'm here with Brittany. Hello. Also here with Gray. Hello. Welcome. Not welcome. (laughs) You're welcome. Here's the host of Second Class Cinema, Gray. You're welcome. (laughs) Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to myself. Thanks for having us, Gray. You're welcome. Well, anytime. Anytime. Yes, excellent. Um... (laughs) Yeah, so so we're here, uh, and we watched the the movie Meet the Applegates, uh, nineteen ninety, <laughs> and it was it was uh, Gray's pick. He yes. brought it on for us to watch. Um, uh, last time Gray was on, we watched the movie Get Even, and before we started that movie, we had a nice long discussion about a, a scene that traumatized us from this movie uh, when we were kids, and that's that that's basically what launched us to start this today yeah yeah i mean uh so basically um uh, you and i uh were just talking and we were you know talking about specifically this movie from our childhood and how we couldn't figure out what movie it was there was some vague like i think i had recalled like oh is there something to do with like aliens or something like that it's just like all i had was vague impressions except for one very distinct scene that occurs in this movie and you had the same same memory of this and so and I, what, I, what had happened was, you know, a couple months ago, or actually last year, I was, I was just trying to figure out what movie this was. And I typed in <laughs> my insane childish description of what I recalled happening in the one scene. Like, it, sh- I mean, should I? Should I? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, j- just a little teaser here. This okay, is teaser. all I could remember <laughs> was a scene in a movie where maybe <laughs> there's an alien and there's an egg that's born and then someone steps on it and it's real gross. Type it straight into Google. <laughs> that whole phrase. And I love that that gave you results. It, it brought me to like <laughs> some like straight message board where someone had essentially typed that same thing. Like, <laughs> Does anyone remember this movie? I've never seen anywhere else. What movie is this? And sure enough, someone said, yes, that's Meet the Applegates. Uh, <laughs> and here we are today watching this movie. No, I, I mean, it was it was weird because when, when you were bringing it up and you were talking about it, I'm like, no fucking way is he talking about the same scene that has burned into my memory as well uh, that fucked me up. Real bad. Uh, real bad. Um, really? So, yeah, I oh well, I don't know if I'm just old and jaded now. Well, this is oh, well. Th- so let's yeah. let's let's start to get into the movie because I th- I have thoughts about why that scene made the impact it did at that particular age, mm-hmm. so yeah, which was no. which was younger than ten. Okay. Yes, 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 younger I, than ten. That adds some context. You're like that's where babies come from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, exactly. All right, so so what is uh, Meet the Apple Gates about, Gray? Why don't you tell us? So Meet the Apple Gates uh, is about. Uh, it starts in the I think Brazilian rainforest. I think um, that's right. You know, we're treated to some scenes of uh, some indigenous people running from uh, uh, tractors and steamrollers that are paving, essentially paving the rainforest. You know, as was a very big issue at the time in deforestation. 1990. Deforestation. A uh, deforestation, and then we are treated to some mysterious scenes, uh, sort of POV scenes of a <laughs> bug of what is people are describing as a giant bug attacking people. Uh, for some reason, there is a meet Dick and Jane book there, uh, and yeah. the bugs are reading this. We cut to a scene somewhere in sort of middle America-ish looking thing, mm-hmm. and we meet the Applegates, yeah. uh, as, okay. the, as the title says. And the Applegates are the all-American family, led by uh, Ed Bagley Jr., uh, <laughs> uh, you know, looking very young and virile, uh, Stocker Channing as his, uh, as his wife Jane, and they're uh, perfect kids, two people I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but one of them, who is who's the son? Uh, he he was the the kid from Tremors. Yes, same kid and same year of the movie too. Yes. So he was very busy that year. So he was busy that year. One of his dance cars was a little bit more full than the other. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so and they are the perfect all American family. They are you know very traditional kind of leave it to Beaver types. Uh, yeah, a nuclear family. Exactly, mm-hmm. and the, and in fact, uh, Ed Bagley Jr. works in a nuclear power plant. He's some sort of debugger. There's a lot of puns in this. Oh yeah, uh, and what we are led to believe. And what 
uh, we realize is that this family is actually giant rainforest cockroaches who have been sent by their species to trigger a nuclear reaction that will leave only the bugs in that particular area. And they are this very classic nuclear family. And then things start to fall apart. Mm. The, uh, the mother falls prey to consumerism uh, <laughs> and then to armed robbery. Uh, which is <laughs> that shopping addiction is out of control. The logical progression. Yeah, it's a downward spiral. Uh, very, uh, very clear downward spiral. The, uh, the father who works the, the power plant uh, has an, a, a weird affair with his secretary, mm. uh, which, you know, and he becomes overcome by lust. The uh, daughter... Uh, fall. Uh, it, it, this this is where it gets a little icky. Is, uh-huh. yeah. is sexually assaulted and and then becomes very promiscuous and and and, and lesbian briefly. <laughs> uh, it, it is it is. There's there's some politics going on with yeah. that. One. Yep. Uh, and then um, and then the son falls in with some heavy uh, some uh, heavy metal uh, no good nicks <laughs> as I would describe them. Uh, All and right. Starts smoking drugs. Uh, very bad smoking drugs. No one no one should ever do. That. Oh yeah. If this movie taught me anything, just pot, say no. Pot turns you into a roach. Turns you into a roach. <laughs> <laughs> and hijinks, hijinks ensue. There is uh, an insurgent uh, group from of other bugs coming in from the rainforest, mm. led by Aunt B, uh, who is a uh, a uh, sort of gruff, cross-dressing uh, <laughs> general <Denny> Coleman. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Large, hey, John, uh, please. You know, a confrontation between the good bugs, which are the, uh, the Apple Gates, and the bad bugs from the rainforest. You know, nuclear crisis averted. Everyone's happy, happy home in the rainforest. At the, the Apple Gates place. realize we're not that different after all. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. And also, everyone has cancer. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes, that the was the end. final. Yeah, the, literally the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was interesting that um, you know they they came into humanity with this mission, but they could not withstand the human condition. They all fell victim to it. It's true. It really. It it almost feels like there's a message in this movie or something it, like that. You know it's what? It yeah. feels like. Yeah, there's, they're trying to tell us something about our, our fundamental nature. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> that's a good point. Okay, you clowns, cut the crap. We should go into successes. Eric, you haven't said much yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, what do you got? What, do you uh, what, was, what did you think of the movie? What was your reaction? I think the throwaway lines in this movie are fantastic. Yes. Uh, yes. Like, yes. The <laughs> incidental dialogue in this movie is fucking hilarious. Well, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think something that, that on that note that's worth noting is this is by the director of Heathers. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it kind of, and I, I actually, I wrote down the same things where yeah. there's like a lot of lines that are very kind of Heathers-esque where there's just kind of, they're like, they're like silly and smart at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah. 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 It has that feel in some areas. Brash yeah. and bizarre. Yeah, I like some of it. Can I, can I quote one of my favorite lines? Go for Hit it. me. Because okay. like, the thing is, so many of them were it throwaway lines. It might be one lines. of my favorite parts, because all of my favorite parts are like lines. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so many of them are throwaway lines. I, like, I didn't take the time to write them down. I was just like, yeah, ah, that's really funny. Yes. Go back to watching the movie. Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, one, one that I wrote down that I just thought was fantastic um, was, the uh, I think, Vince, who was the, the sexual assaulter. Yes, uh, yes. Um, uh, and he, at one point, and this kind of makes a lot of sense, uh, he says, I think she needs her temperature taken with an all beef thermometer. <laughs> it is, that, that was a pretty good one. He also introduces himself as, uh, 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 hi, I'm Vince, uh, voted best hair in senior class, <laughs> which is a classic he- Heather's line yeah. that just apparently didn't make Heather's and just they were like, oh, yeah, yeah I'll put it in this one. <laughs> yeah. That's a good yeah, point. They don't even let that line breathe. They just hope you pick it up. Yeah, there's a, there's a nice one, which is uh, uh, parents are pig. Parents are pigs. <laughs> you know, and they said in that classic late 80s early 90s way (laughs) and when the son became a a a harsh stoner he would say bogus and then he just started saying bogue yeah he did (laughs) which i was like he had some truly great lines none of which i wrote down unfortunately the delivery of most of his lines yeah Yeah, Yeah. because because it was all in this like yeah man (laughs) (laughs) you know your classic kind of 80 stoner dude yeah oh man uh yeah, I think all the, the, the casual delivery of those throwaway lines just was... It was really the only elements of comedy that the movie, like, had. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the cast was good, I would say. Yeah. I would say it's a success. Like, I mean, it's, it's a 
real stacked cast. Uh, you know, Ed Baker Jr., Dr. Channing. I liked a lot of the stuff that uh, Aunt B, who, who was the actor who was Aunt B? Uh, uh, Dabney Coleman? Yeah, yeah. D- uh, Dabney Coleman. I liked a lot of his sort of delivery, and like you could tell he was kind of the uh, uh, Will Ferrell of this movie where they're like, oh, j- just, just like, you know, riff on some stuff. Just riff. <laughs> you know, do that. Um, yeah, so I, I would say that, you know, for me, uh, you know, cast and to some extent performances were were good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was... It was a strange mood because mm-hmm. this was yes. a this was a dark comedy horror like horror like almost bo- horror body horror theory. style style but it not like did gruesome. It reminded me of society at a few points. There was a lot of gloop. Yeah. It was a, 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 a lot a lot of gloopy gloop. Yes, <laughs> a lot this was of a sticky like, movie. A lot of like weird things trying to just assimilate into human culture. <laughs> yeah. I would say also the practical effects were pretty Totally. Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like I mean, you could tell, like, I don't think that they were, tr- they they were kind of in that era, and like, and when we were talking about uh, before the podcast started, you know, this was a relatively inexpensive movie. It did not make its budget back. <laughs> nope. Oh, face like, plant. Like, real hard face plant. Yeah, yeah. Like not even um, an eighth. But, you know, but they, they have some pretty cool practical effects. Um, I, I, do... do I feel like we should almost move into failures. I'm I, like, I'm, I'm struggling <laughs> to figure out more to say. Does anyone have like? No, um, honestly, my yeah. biggest um, strength was just the writing and like the throwaway dialogue yeah. was yeah spot on. Yeah, well, I mean, it was enough for me to just expect laughs, like because yes. everyone moved in such a way where the, it felt like a comedy the way it moved. But yeah. then, like, there were these weird moods of of like horror. Like there really, it really was. I think that I think transitioning into fa- into failures is that th- there's a there's some there's tonal issues in this. <laughs> this is a tonally all over the place. It's movie. deaf. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Tone deaf. But, but it has like a couple different tones. It has like you know. And I was saying this, and I was thinking like, okay, it's a little. It's too serious for it to be a kids movie. There's swearing, way too serious. There's body horror, rape. like there, yeah, yeah. There's there's rape. I mean, although at the although they they treat it pretty lightly. They've yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But a little bit gross. super casual rape. Super casual. Pretty rape. much for the first like third of this movie, anyone who has any sort of intimate encounter is not consensual. It is, it is very... It's and the it's, weirdest thing. Yeah, so there's like, there's, there, yeah, there's this crazy tonal issue, so it's like, it's definitely not for kids, but it's too silly for adults, kind of. Mm. Like, it, 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 well, I was, and I was saying, like, so there, a lot of the tonal issues feels to me like, this is like 70% of what the Coneheads was. Dude. <laughs> yes. This is, this movie felt to me like an attempt to add an SNL movie of that era. Oh, mm. man. Yeah, I'm on the same exact plane. Where it, it started from a sketch that's like kind of a good idea. That's like, oh, okay, that's kind of funny in a sketch. And it's one, because it's one joke. It's the all-American family is actually bugs. <laughs> um, and then it gets drawn out and... The sort of the way it was filmed was very SNL of that era, you know. It's it's sort of tonally a little sillier than like an adult movie should be, but it's but it's still aimed at adults. It's very dated. It's very dated yeah. in sort of the 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 takes on people. There's a lot of sort of stereotypes. There's a lot of <laughs> casual homophobia. There's a predatory <laughs> lesbian that just licks her lips at one point. <laughs> is wearing all denim. Um, you know. Biker, yeah, yeah. So there, there's it's it's totally a little all. Yeah, there was place. never really. I felt like the plot was kind of meandering. Like it really moved away from the whole reason they were there for so long. It has that SNL thing where the like third act is garbage. Yeah, the there's no heavy drama. Mess. Like all the conflict is very like light, and then it's over. Yeah, and it just moves on to the next thing. Yeah, I mean to to agree with you, Gray. I mean, I actually wrote time like this would be better suited as a mad TV sketch. <laughs> like, yes. That is in my notebook. Like I totally felt, and I got the Coneheads vibe because the whole like, hey, we're trying to assimilate these people into this culture. Let's see how weird it gets. Yeah, and they're and and you know when they had sort of the same Coneheads thing where like there'll be scenes where the the, the comedy is like they're trying to be a normal family, but they eat a weird thing. So like <laughs> you know a lot of the jokes were like, hey, would you like more? 
more sugar. I just picked up some delicious trash. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, that's it's like, oh, OK, that's a pretty funny joke. But then it kind of really hammers on it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, 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 it wanted to be the Conan's. Do you think it was Conan's before or after? This I the, after. the movie was after. The movie was after. OK. Yes. So, yeah, it's like for some reason it felt to me like, OK, it's almost Conan's, but not quite. And then there were and the moment. So this scene. The scene that the we're talking about. Se- all right, the scene. All right, go, let's go through it. Then. Let's go to the scene. Let's go to the scene. So the scene is, there is a point in this movie where after being sexually assaulted, ew, 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 um, <laughs> the, the daughter becomes pregnant. And, you know, there's a scene where the, 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 the Applegates are confronted with the, the, a photographer from some sort of family magazine. And you're like, you're the most perfect family. You're the most average family. And, you know, the son's on drugs. All their <laughs> stuff has been possessed. Uh, and the daughter is... By re- ghosts. By, of course. By... Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, spook. The Ottoman. <laughs> Let's face it, the scariest of all furniture is, is the Ottoman. Yeah, of course. Uh, it almost has like, Ottoman. Uh, that was a really right stupid there. digression. Right uh, sorry, I, sorry, I got excited about possessions. <laughs> so, and they, and, and basically, the daughter is pregnant, very pregnant. Super pregnant. And through a bizarre pushing shoving match that she gets in with the the person from this contest that she, was a whole different thing i was like you're really gonna shove a pregnant lady yeah that was there was a very strange that was like <laughs> like a strange escalation there <laughs> through a shoving match she's pushed to the floor she goes into labor and out from between her legs shoots a squishy jiggly egg yeah. Right to the feet of the contest people, one of them goes, oh, gross, and steps on it and gooshes everything. <laughs> yeah. And that was the scene that yeah. you and I, Tom, bonded over <laughs> the trauma. Oh, my God. It, the, it was burned in our memory. And rewatching it, it's definitely less gooshy than, Way, than okay. I recall. I will say that in my head, it was a lot worse. Like yeah. slime everywhere. Like, like, it was like just, everyone was just dripping. And was it was like, disgusting. Yeah, and it was like, like I recall more... discharge. I recall just like you're tr- just disgusting. <laughs> like thinking I would be up at night thinking about that. <laughs> And, you know, and so there's, there's a couple of things I feel about this in, in regards to the trauma of that scene versus watching it now where it being pretty tame. One, yeah. you know, time marches on. We have seen some gooshy shit. I mean, we all watched last week's episode of Game of Thrones, right? We yes. all have. Gooshy. Um, <laughs> but, but also just kind of this idea that, like, first off, we were super young. Probably hadn't had the sex talk yet, so we probably oh, didn't know how babies, not. babies were born. <laughs> so this, this is definitely real life? T- Tommy's <laughs> sleepover cable in the basement didn't happen for at least another three years. Yeah, no, that was at least another three years. <laughs> and the tone being so weird and inconsistent of this movie, like that's a pretty body horror moment. Oh yeah, that's a pretty like oh, it's a human giving birth to a larva, like the fly, real Cronenberg, yeah. <laughs> like budget Cronenberg. So that weird, un- it's unintentionally scary. There's many moments, the transformations particularly, in this thing, which are kind of well done. Yep. Yeah. Oh, definitely well done. But are very unintentionally scary if you're like a, a nine-year-old watching <laughs> Ten and under. Yeah, well, I mean, and when the movie started and the credits were rolling and we're going through this whole thing, like, I... I totally get how this movie duped me into thinking it was okay to watch. Like, as a kid, it was just a bright color, you know, text, and... It's like, cartoony. Yeah. Cartoony yeah. music. It's like Pleasantville. It's, it's got the soundtrack to Flubber, basically. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like every <laughs> 90s comedy. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was so wacky, and then, like, you know... And all these weird things happen that you don't understand when you're, like, eight, and you're watching mm-hmm. these things. Like, I didn't get... I didn't get yeah. the whole like sexual assault part. Like I didn't make any sense to me. And but, they're on oh, yeah. a trampoline, so it's made. It's kind of like it's. It almost has like a cartoon physics to it. It's like, yeah. just, and he's just so nonchalant about it. She's like, "No, I don't want to do this." He's like, "Yes, you do." I love rough yeah. trade. Uh, he says that like three times. Oh my god, rough I want, trade. I want to fucking snap his <laughs> neck. <laughs> oh god, that was gross. Yeah. So I mean, I, th- that scene is just a great example of how how this just just totally whiffed on, on a mood. Yeah. and But the weird thing is, if you think about Heathers, like, Heathers almost has a sort of... Stuff like that. Yeah, Heathers uh. has has stuff like that, but for some reason, it works. I think because it doesn't take it to that, like, extra level where there's literal bugs. Like, he- like because it's, <laughs> it's allowed to be, like, a little bit... 
exaggerated, whereas this is almost Tex Avery cartoon with sexual assault, casual homophobia, and gooshy gooshies. Yeah, <laughs> and like drug use, yes. and, um, you know, addictive personalities, people getting into shit. Like, it's fucked up. So you can kind of smell some like producer after this was turned in being like, oh my God, who the fuck is this movie for? <laughs> oh my God, what have we done? We spent like, w- like we got to bury this shit. We, like, it's not for kids and it's not for adults. Yeah, at least with Heather's, it has like this really like black comic side yes. to it, which like totally contrasts the horrifying nature of some of the stuff that happens in it mm-hmm. i don't know it's easier to take it lighter if that makes sense yeah no i did yeah heather's at least had it was a cohesive mood yes. even though it was a little up and down this was just broken because it seemed, it seemed like a broken movie watching it now as an adult yeah i think the other thing too which I worry this movie took itself almost a little too seriously. Like the social commentary felt sincere in, yeah. a, in a way. It's like yeah. it's really stupid and heavy handed. It, it, it's it's really like this is dark satire. She, <laughs> she can't stop shopping. It's an addiction. <laughs> you know, like kids doing drugs in the rainforest. Don't get me started. <laughs> it's like it had that, but it, it's like at its core was just like a little too. Like a little too earnest about its about its about its attempt at satire, making it like okay, like 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 we were talking about before we started here. It's like has anyone really done a thing recently where it's been like you know the rainforest is being <laughs> paved over right now? It's like yeah. no, they stopped doing that in December thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. Exactly. Y two K was just the rainforest scare. I don't know if you guys actually. Yeah, I feel like the cover story for like the back the moral backbone was just not good enough so it was just oddly in your face about the and, and morality then, and then the scene basically the big speech that uh, Ed Begley uh, gets to like have everyone like because they're about to like basically string them up lynch uh, them in town hall in front of the black <laughs> sheriff yeah which again who, in they, bad taste who was also you know a victim of these bugs yes, yes. but then they all yelled at him for being like a bug lover yeah yeah, yeah. There, that were, there was like some stuff that like I'm like oh do you is, do you know the dynamics going on here yeah. it's a little weird they didn't care yeah, no it's, <laughs> it's so yeah like he gives his big speech about like you know like you're no better than me you look at our family and you see us as deviants but you you, you know you spray chemicals and who here you know, hasn't stepped on a bug yeah and it's like oh is this like this is like even hyper PETA this is like <laughs> this is like you can't even eat meat you can't even eat bugs yeah <laughs> well I know they, they even talk shit about our ground beef man you know yeah it's, it's hey I want to save a nickel on ground beef. I know, right? <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't want to save a nickel here and there? See I thought it was rainforest. so weird because every time I noticed something problematic, they would like address it almost immediately after. Hmm. Is, yeah. was, um, was there a self awareness to the movie? I don't know I, because I felt like it was meandering right around the time when like Aunt B came. And I was like, I feel like they're not focusing on the main plot of this at all, which is to cause a nuclear explosion. I, um, I had that same feeling where every time they would cut to like Rio, it would just be like, whoa, okay, okay whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Aunt B gets there and he, question mark, is like, you haven't done anything you were supposed to do. Where are the plans? Where are this? I was like, you know what, dude? I was just wondering the same yeah, fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> what? So, so Aunt, B is in tr- Aunt B is an interesting case because Aunt B, like... Anbi had some moments of almost like progressive stuff where it's like Anbi is identified as female. Um, but it's totally in a man's body. In a man's body, mustache, very gruff, you know, like, <laughs> has gruff. like, it like starts out randomly just being like, just randomly wearing like women's clothing and then gets like some, then like drops some weird homophobic stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then in like, I don't, there's a lot of jokes, which is just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a girl, whatever, you know. Yeah, but then it's <laughs> also like to a guy, yeah. it's not a banana in my pocket. I'm just happy to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they did that one. There was yeah. literally a banana. It was in a banana, pocket. in fairness. And then I had the in same fairness. thought that um, Dickhead, which was basically like, oh, this is only going to like cause the life in this immediate area to die. Because I had written that down. I was like, but I thought it's only like a small explosion. Yeah. Well, it's because they were in Ohio, right? Yes. Middle America. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, and I will say that, I mean, if this did take place in Ohio, that um, that would explain why this movie is so weird, because everyone from Ohio is weird. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Okay, just so we, we settle that. Yep, just so we settle <laughs> that. I've fact lived in, uh, in Michigan, and I can attest to, uh, yeah, some of that. Oh, good, okay. Right. <laughs> some of that. Uh, Eric, what do you have to contribute to failures? Anything specific? Um, 
I don't think the intentional jokes in this movie are funny at all. <laughs> no. Anything that was written is terrible. <laughs> well, that's funny because, uh, Brittany, you said you actually like the writing. Well, I mean, the, the throwaway lines that are written are great. Okay. Yeah. The ones that, like, they were like, oh, this is going to be, we're going to have to pause for laughter. Like a setup in a punchline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There we go. That's the best way to put yeah, it. Yeah, well, because they had whole yeah. scenes dedicated to one punchline. And oh not boy. even a punchline, just a pun. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was the one scene that, that the, was... The closet scene, I oh, believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That it was, was cringeworthy. It was cringeworthy on, like, you know, it was a bad... There was the, 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 the punchline of the scene is that there is actually a person all in a cocoon in, in a closet, and the, it's like, oh, maybe he's in the closet, you know, as in, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then everyone was pissed. They're like, you know... You called my son gay. Why would you do that? Yeah, there's a lot of and like you know like a lot of a lot of uh, the big thing be like the worst thing that you could do is call someone gay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand that though because she never said that. She was just like, oh, he mentioned some guy named Larry, yeah. and then everyone was like, you called my son a faggot. Well, that's I the was thing, like, like, whoa, I, that's <laughs> a leap. <laughs> you are reading into this. And one. there was a part of me that felt right? like, oh, is this a comment on Middle America's homophobia? Mm. But then Aunt B would be would just be like, that guy's a cocksucker, and I was like, dude, <laughs> like, so part of me feels like men oh, is this can just like know. A, other men. Yeah, is this just like a sour homophobic movie? Which to me felt like, <laughs> which to me felt like, okay, maybe it's just dated in a really bad way like, of that it time. Is. It's yeah. like in that weird transitional period where they were like, we're okay with uh, homosexuals, but we're also going to make jokes about them. Yeah, like, yeah. they yeah. couldn't <laughs> quite figure out what they were supposed to do. <laughs> like sometimes when you watch The Simpsons, like some of those jokes do not age well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, of that like early '90s era. Yeah, well, I hate to keep going back to Heather's, but I mean, there's a lot of that in that movie. Like mm -hmm. when. Veronica goes on a date with her friend and her friend's just getting date raped in the background and she's like climbing over a fence and like you can just see this girl struggling on the ground but you're like ha ha this is comedy <laughs> yeah and then like you know it's like what yeah and then the, the, as we said the predatory lesbian who who literally at, like as as our our you know our, our pregnant uh, teenager is describing how she was sexually assaulted and is now pregnant is like leaning forward just being like men are pigs <laughs> and licking her lips and I'm like Oh, but you know that's... what bothered me? She never said she was raped. No, yeah. I mean they was... never call it rape. They never address the fact that this is a rape. This is what raping is. Well, this is she's like he porked me and then I killed his ass. This is <laughs> this is coming off of like Revenge of the Nerds, where it's like a lot of these things that we now very rightfully are like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's rape. That's cool. <laughs> okay, Am ambiguous. Okay, cool. Yeah, you 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 did sexuals to a person who were saying no. That's rape. Yeah. Uh, you know, like <laughs> that. Sexuals. Like 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 at that point, we were really in in this period where it's like, well, you can do it. And like, oh, she's just so put out. But it's like, it's like, no, this is that's a big deal. <laughs> you know, yeah. she really wants it. Yeah. yeah, women never know what they want. Well, it's um, it's actually interesting. <laughs> they need a man to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we you know we keep comparing this to to Heather's uh, and the because the director made both these movies, but he only wrote Meet the Apple Gates. Ooh. Mm. So actually, I think that I think that's kind of interesting because they do have like this. They share that same like diminishing quality yeah. of like truth and reality and make it funny and both movies did that very successfully but this movie was just, I don't know I feel like it's purposeful though it's like look at all this shit we just accept in our everyday lives yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. stop and think about it it's really fucked up I like uh -huh. I like that mood you yeah. Know? yeah yeah he's definitely tr he definitely I feel like in doing Heather's he was inspired to just be like oh I like this tone and then try it himself I'm like oh you're not a writer dude yeah you know, <laughs> like you just you just are you don't have the skill that that, that I think the script of Heather's had yeah, yeah, exactly. Because honestly, I mean, I think I think this. I mean, I know I had some tonal problems, but I think the the look of this movie was very consistent throughout. Yeah, totally. So so I you know it had it had the glue, the visual glue. It just didn't have anything, you know, content wise to keep it keep no. it steady. Um, if are we are we done complaining about our, are we venting? <laughs> the, the only other the only real quick thing I want to uh, I, I would add to the failures is there's an end fight scene between <laughs> two bugs. It's a uh, non fight. That is not a fight scene. <laughs> there is it is made out of clicks and hisses. They spit at each other. One of the bugs slips and then is squished, and. It is impossible to tell. <laughs> Gray was like, which "Wait, bug was that the which. good guy bug?" Or? Yeah, was that the bug I like, or was that the bug I want to die? So it's like, was it, that it's Ed Bugley Jr.? <laughs> yeah. Was that the, <laughs> did you say Ed Bugley Jr.? Of course I did. Oh, I love you. This is <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the episode's over. Good job, Eric. Funniest thing I ever said in my life. Okay, so let's um. Uh, let's talk about some favorite parts of the movie, um, parts that stuck out. I will say that that uh, pregnancy scene is not my favorite part. Um, 
but uh, there are probably some other moments, guys. Brittany, what do you have? For, uh, well, for I had the beef thermometer thing. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was definitely um, one of the first stars. I, I and then when Aunt B is on the phone with Dick, and oh some guy God. walks by <laughs> and grabs her ass, his ass. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she's like, oh, she makes like a comment, just like a quick, quick, what the fuck? And Dick's like, what? And he goes, oh, nothing. Some asshole just tried to rape me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it obviously like, knows that rape exists. Yeah. Well, I think you have your idea of what raping is. Yeah. It's very skewed. Yeah. It shows the polar opposites, right? So we actually see someone get raped in which it has no mention of that <laughs> whatsoever. We see someone just get a little pinch on, on the tush and that's, that's rape. Yeah, that's yeah. rape. I think, and I think we're supposed to laugh at the fact that, oh, it's a dude. So it's mm. like, oh yeah, he's to- and he dudes can't get raped. And also, and the and the, yeah, the, 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 the 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 way the character says it is very nonchalant. So that's part of the humor of the delivery. It's like, mm. oh yeah, it's just like you know, I just he just tried to rape me. And it's like, <laughs> and the, and I think that you know, and so that's a that's a good sort of social observation where it's like he feels powerful and protected from sexual assault mm-hmm. right so there. Something the so tiny. Yeah. He's a bug. He just doesn't understand sexual assault. <laughs> that could be um, it too. Also, well, I'll Did let you, you guys go. Do you think this movie go. was written by a bug? Because that would explain a lot. <laughs> well, if the director is a bug, then yeah. yeah. I don't want to take anyone else's favorite part, so um, come back to me. Yeah, I, I kind of already said one. Um, Eric, what about you? Um, there's one line that is read out by the, uh, the, the, the son of the family. They made me try drugs and I couldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been I love there. The construction of that sentence. They made me try drugs. <laughs> Just something that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was weird that whenever he smoked pot, he just couldn't help but turning back into his true form. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Sh- yeah, I'm not sure where that was going, but I mean, I think I, I mean, I get it. It kind of like would weaken any sort of front you have to put on. You know, he doesn't sure. care as much, and and uh, maybe yeah. it's just some really good shit. <laughs> True. Well, well, that's what they thought well there's that one scene where yeah. you know he starts transforming and his friends who are also I guess high are like whoa someone must have dusted this stuff <laughs> well, you have a bug arm yeah yeah and that's and, and that's like that's a pretty good line <laughs> slash scene in anything that's a good scene yeah, I, yeah. I, I like that that, that was, was almost anything involving the, the sun was was really well, good I like the sun fun. stuff a lot too yeah, yeah. I was gonna say like a lot of my sort of favorite stuff is his interactions uh, the 80s metal dudes. Yeah, I thought heavy it metal felt twins. Like more at home in this film yeah, than definitely. anything else did. Right. Well, it, it was definitely the least mired in like check out the social commentary, guys. Yeah. Like it was just funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, funny. <laughs> and like kind of plays into like, oh, this is like this is from that era, but mm. in the kind of a, a, like, oh, this is sort of a funny thing that they thought that like these metal kids were like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they didn't could, realize that all metalheads were just nerds at heart. Like, yeah, <laughs> and you can look at this pretty much any like decade, I feel, and get that stereotype. It's not dated. Yeah, yeah that that still holds. Um, I'll, I'll say uh, a favorite part of mine is another line from the movie, and it comes. Uh, so it's uh, Dick Applegate, the dad. He's having an affair with uh, his secretary at work, <laughs> and in the midst of them, you know, having sex on the desk, they knock over like the telecom speaker thing. <laughs> it's 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 ringing over the whole office, and the the CEO of this company, you know, he hears it. He gets all upset. He runs into the office and he goes in. <laughs> I see you hard at work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was a triumph of punctuation. Oh my <laughs> goodness! I, I, my head fell back with laughter, as and a, I was like so proud who, to hear it. Yeah, as a person so who, hard, my who, head who, who, was, who was like who was uh, written a script or two, I was just like, oh my god, that is a writer's dream. <laughs> hard comma at work. I see you hard at work. <laughs> hard at work. Oof, love it. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Great. What about you? Uh, I really like the practical effects. Like I said before, uh, I mean, I, I'm a sucker for practical effects because sort of my theory is, you know, nowadays we have CGI and CGI looks better in a way, but we know that anything that's on screen isn't real anyway. Mm-hmm. So I find I, I take a lot of pleasure in seeing a real thing that a camera is filming. No mm. matter, you know, how kind of cheesy or it looks like a puppet. But And this movie, <laughs> I thought, like, had some practical uh, uh practicals uh, it's like it's like uh, uh practical uh transformations that were really good mm. uh very disturbing i thought the transformations arguably were scarier than the scene with the bugs yeah especially a dog the dog, the dog dude. Oh, that's that nice. was that i think was my favorite of them the dog was legitimately horrifying that's my last favorite part <laughs> dude <laughs> the oh. dog looked gnarly 
Dog. <laughs> that was gnarly. Yeah. Gnarly bug. <laughs> like, part of me feels like, I don't know if it was before or after, probably before, but the fly. There, there's, there's a transforming, there's like some sort of animal in the fly. Is there not? Oh, he starts yeah. transforming into a fly. Yeah, well. well <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. Well, he, turns into, he turns into Paul Stanley first. Are you are you saying that nature finds a way? <laughs> oh, now I'm getting things confused. Well, I didn't realize that um, flies were just like pets for roaches. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that a was lot weird. of unclear yeah. uh, I mean, that's, species that's, things happening. It's like Goofy with Pluto. You know, yeah. it's like two dogs. <laughs> So to frame this scene, <laughs> the son goes in the basement and is getting high, and he calls their family dog over. Spot. Hey, Spot, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> Spot is also a bug, just disguised. <sighs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going over there? Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So Spot, <laughs> Spot gets high, <laughs> gets contact high, and then also starts transforming back into his bug self, and then freaks out and flies out a window. <laughs> Yeah, and which yep. I thought was great. It was just it was this crazy scene, and then it's just over, and he's like, "Whoa, cool!" And then <laughs> and he's just high. Yeah, he's like, "Fucking whoa, what the fuck?" Yeah, he says, like "What that. the fuck?" I think that was the only fuck in the movie. Fuck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's one more fuck after oh, was that. There? But that was the first one I noticed. Oh, for okay, sure. I think Dick says it later or something. Oh, because I think it's this movie's PG thirteen. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Yeah, it might. Yeah, I mean, there's oh, yeah, there, R. No, I'm sorry. But that, the thing is, oh. but there's no violence or nudity really. Yeah, not like, like human uh, violence. No, no. I mean, there's a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of bug violence. But Even like the transformation scenes aren't that scary. Like you don't see anyone's like, like skin tearing apart. Well, you do or, once. Like, do you? I don't yeah, remember I remember mean, any like kind of explicit. explicit. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of see Dick Dick's face like go all wacky when um those two like magazine oh, guys oh, show yeah, up. And yeah, like, wiggling like at the temples. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it still wasn't like over the top or anything. It was just kind of yeah, touching. no one like ripping their skin off. It it's just almost had, like yeah. a gooey exoskeleton. It's underneath. almost like I feel like they probably like they shot this movie thinking, okay, we're just gonna get PG thirteen. We'll have the two fucks in there, <laughs> and they usually allow that. Like, yeah. yeah. And, like, Big like last week, yeah, uh, and then uh, which there are tits and big. That is a it, it, what? I'm pretty sure there are tits and big. Really? Hmm. Are there big tits? I haven't in? seen that movie in Look, years. You know what? I'm not setting you up for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't play into his games. Uh, <laughs> I base my entire existence on playing you into that son shit. Son of a bitch! <laughs> I don't play your fucking games. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, I feel like the. the they shot it and almost they showed it to the censors and the censors probably just didn't like the movie like <laughs> they just were like this movie's stupid let's give it an R <laughs> and so and so the studio stupid. has this movie that has to crazy tonal issues isn't violent it doesn't have boobs and is R so there's yeah. like there's nothing there's, we there's, can do with this. There's, there's nothing from the cut to make there's it a PG-13. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. yeah. It just sucks and they don't like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, are there, are there anyone else want to highlight any other favorite? Actually, I do have one more small favorite part, uh, <laughs> and it's kind of on the, the eating wacky stuff. Uh, when they were drinking, like, look like maple syrup out of the jug with a straw. Yeah, that was that pretty was, good. Was I good. was like, I'm in. I appreciated that. Very super troopers. I do have one more small uh, thing in terms of uh, great line deliveries. Oh, okay. There was a guy whose only role was to <laughs> leave the nuclear reactor room and say, don't go in there. There's a giant bug. <laughs> and the delivery was so good. Oh, he's in there and he's like, oh, open up a window. Yeah. There's a giant bug. And I'm like, this is a nuclear power plant <laughs> is melting down. And the idea that they're like, oh, he's going to treat it like a bee. There's just a bee in there. Open up a window. I'm like, this is... Because this is that's your biggest problem right now. <laughs> Uh, all right. Are there any? Or, oh. I was going to say how Aunt B bursts through the floor and asks anyone if they have a lighter, and they actually look for one. <laughs> yes, that was a good little slapstick moment. Yeah, that was very cartoony. Um, any any other favorite parts, uh, unless or statements or anything like that, uh, or we can we can start rating it. The defense rests. All right, let's rate. So let's rate it then. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Yeah, fuck I'm gonna you. have to give it an unfortunate fuck off. Oh my god, my fucking father. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah! All right, guys, let's rate Meet the Applegates from 1990 or 91, whatever. Um, who wants to begin? Who wants to rate it? No. Um, <laughs> uh, ooh, uh, I'll the, uh, all right, pretty. Um, mm. I'll give it a fucking fine. Okay. Um, it wasn't like I feel like if I had seen it as a kid, I would have a different feeling about it. Mm. Um, it wasn't like over the top hilarious. It had some really genuinely hilarious lines though. Um, I don't know if I would ever watch it again, just like for fun. 
I, you know, kind of picking, uh, uh, piggybacking off of that, where you know, I saw it as a kid, and I it made a big impression on me. And watching it again now, I would give it a fuck meh. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, yeah, a lot of the same things, you know, some some good inspired lines, but then also, you know, it's it's really dated. It's bogged down with like this sort of weird stereotyping and homophobia and sexual assault and like just baggage 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 <laughs> and 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 kind of like i said like this is like one of those kind of toss off snl movies almost mm. just, yeah. just without snl it's like it's like meat pat you know <laughs> it, 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 it's it's something that that they're like oh well we can make this cheap we'll have a few like pretty solid actors in there and we'll do something who you know with the guy who had a hit before with heathers like kind of this this cult hit but it just doesn't have the charm to be a cult hit no and it's just not as entertaining as i recall it being yeah, it doesn't mm-hmm. really know what it is i feel yeah yeah so i yeah fuck man fuck man <laughs> yeah fucking fine a fuck man yeah, I can agree. I'm actually I'm gonna go with, with a uh, just a fuck off. I um, which is which is which is the middle. You know, I'm probably I am glad I I watched it as an adult to almost just you know quell the the weirdness <laughs> in my brain of that yeah. scene that I hadn't watched and now I understand. I'm like, okay, well it's not as bad as I thought. So okay, you know maybe it'll change my life. It's it's like if you if you're Asian Mulder and you're like and you could see your sister being uh, ab- abducted. <laughs> you're like, I just gotta verify my memories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'll give it a, a fuck. Out. I probably won't watch it again. I hate when movies don't live up. Yeah, looking at you, the Saint, yeah. starring Val Kilmer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that that's basically that's basically. It. I mean, it was it had funny moments. I think I I mean I didn't hate it while I was watching it or anything like that. So I mean, and we were also nine too. So yeah. you know, f- to for it to make an impression, like you just hadn't seen as many movies. Period. Yeah, <laughs> in the nine y- years you were alive versus the you know twenty plus now. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this is bizarre as an adult. So yes. for a child mind, I can see <laughs> how this would be immortalized in like a, a fucking hall of weirdness. Yeah, you just have to ask yourself. This is normal, right? <laughs> I'm supposed to be watching this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, again, on, on that scene, why it was so fucked up is is because she was so like distraught about it in the next scene yes which was i think the part that really stuck with me most as the kid is like that was so fucked up it like jumbles you up emotionally yeah i was so confused it's like if you don't know what birth is like (laughs) you you like it kind of like i I think that could be legit yeah like if i ever have a kid i think i'm gonna have a fear now i'm like it's gonna be a goosey egg it's gonna be goosey egg syndrome (laughs) all over again you gave birth to a white jelly bean but then like why does that guy step on it if that's the case yeah (laughs) Yeah. and then he was like we gotta go (laughs) he's basically like Okay, guys, mistakes were made. (laughs) We're going to go now. Yeah, that was just the placenta, right? (laughs) Eric, what do you give this movie? Um, I'm I'm going to give it a fuck off, pretty much for all the same reasons. I'd say it's definitely on the higher end of the fuck off because it didn't commit the yep the fuck off sin of being boring. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does suffer from all the problems that have been mentioned. That said, I would totally understand if there are like three people out there who this is their favorite movie of all time. (laughs) Um. Which uh, so. and one thing uh, worth mentioning about the movie is it is incredibly hard to find. Uh, there are VHS copies floating around. There's obviously you know various things that are online that uh, you know we may or may not have watched it on. Yeah, Which was a rip of a VHS. We saw the yes. tracking information. Yes, <laughs> but uh, to to this, uh, not released on DVD, not released on Blu-ray. Obviously, just hard to find. It's mm. just one of those movies there's no demand for it. Save yes. the plastic. No. Yeah, you don't need Save the rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> this movie would agree. Yeah, for sure. Um any any final thoughts or anything? Actually, I I have one um one one question for for everyone. So, you know, this was a, a scene from, you know, Grey Knight's childhood that it just fucked with us. Do you guys have any of those? Brittany Eric? Do you have any uh, scene from a movie that I've, is just like stuck with yeah, you? Yeah, stuck in your memory. I've been trying to think of one for like the last three hours ever since you guys mentioned it. I can't. I know there is one, but I can't think of what it is. So I'm probably repressing it for good reason. <laughs> oh, you know what mine is. Which one? Um, Actually, were we watching it earlier today? No, oh. Pet Cemetery did destroy me. Actually, yeah, Zelda from Pet Cemetery with her twisted spine did scar me as a child. I feel like she still haunts my dreams. Um, but Fire in the Sky, that uh-huh. movie, oh my god, about the guy who oh gets my. abducted by aliens. He I lives saw, in group too. I that's saw, a, that's another one. Yeah. Yes, I remember just seeing like the fraction of that movie where he has the flashback to when he's like on the spaceship and he wakes up in this like cocoon of goo and is like floating around and then has all these terrible experiments done on him and it just 
fucking traumatized me. And then I watched it again, and I was like, still terrifying. <laughs> I was not yeah. as scary, but definitely I. It was good. See yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good. decent movie. It, it, def- I, it might not hold up quite as much. Uh, yeah. And actually, uh, so w- you and I have talked about obviously the the egg scene in this movie really messed me up. Uh, one one other scene that really fucked me up real bad as a kid was when I was watching Poltergeist. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Poltergeist, where because I had a room in the attic. And when the tree oh, is reaching yeah. in and grabs the kid, and uh, it's like this whole terrifying thing, I had to watch a Muppet Christmas Carol <laughs> three times, <laughs> three times after I saw that scene, just because I was so fucking scared. I'm like, I'm never sleeping again. I'm done sleeping. Gonzo, I, I, so, save me. Yeah, <laughs> yes, please. Need to the, the power of a street corner <laughs> choir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I could sing the whole soundtrack with you. We can do that another. Needed episode. to go to bed with a grateful heart. <laughs> Actually, you know, That's, I did just think of one, oh, yeah. um, and maybe it doesn't count because uh, I was raised more with video games than movies. Well, no, it counts. Yeah, that counts. But count. uh, the original Mortal Kombat, mm. you know, the fatalities were kind of like secret, like you had to figure them out over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. And my sister managed to do Raiden's after we had that copy of that game for like three weeks or so, Ooh. and I saw it, and like he just like zaps you and you turn into dust and like your skull falls on, and that freaked the shit out of me as a kid. <laughs> and I distinctly remember I saw that, I paused for a moment, I said, I think I'll go read now, and I ran out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I just picture you like heading into your room and just like and like just sitting on your bed and be like I understand mortality now. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. it's funny that you mentioned poltergeist though because I was actually having a conversation at work yesterday about the same thing like childhood movies that scared you and somebody else mentioned poltergeist but they mentioned the TV thing TV oh yeah that's, that's a, the movie seemed to have yeah. fucked up a lot of people <laughs> for sure really? uh, there's there's one more for, for me and it's, it's funny too because uh, this is also a movie that as a kid I didn't understand what was happening and that's and I still haven't seen it again is serial mom Yes. So I didn't understand. It's great, by the way. It's awesome. Is it still? Okay. It totally holds up. I mean, most John Waters movies hold up, at least in terms of entertainment value. Yeah. Uh, So that was, so that's, yeah, but that definitely holds up. I had similar feelings where I'm like, well, this is fucked up. Like, well, and honestly, because I knew it was called Serial Mom, I didn't get there were two different serials. <laughs> so, so I, I thought, you know, this was some, some sort of Captain you Crunch situation. <laughs> I was going to Cocoa Puffs. Puffs. Yeah, and then... And, Cuckoo Forum. <laughs> there's one scene in that movie where she, like, sneaks into the bathroom and, like, kills a dude who's at the urinal. Are we the same person? <laughs> yeah, Are I we think the we, same person? I think we're the fucking same person because you talked about <laughs> Mother <laughs> Christmas Carol 2. Which we have a post of right which, in our which is my favorite movie space. number one movie favorite movie of all time but dude that scene and then like she stabs him back and then she almost like pulls it out and there's like this thing there's, there's thing meat hanging. on it there's a meat on there's, it there's, there's, <laughs> there's like go- I, I know I keep saying gushy that's like my favorite descri- <laughs> description of a particular type of effect uh, that, that that we don't see much anymore no it's, like. it's gone no, by the way so but anyway but yes there, I remember this exact scene she has an ice pick it's okay that's what it is I couldn't remember pick. the weapon she stabs him and it comes out and there's like sticky like meat stuff on it, on it. Yeah. and I didn't understand how she was and, and as a kid and you know you, you have a mom and you're like oh your mom loves you and then you see this other mom killing people but like also I'm like I didn't understand it like I could not make sense of it am I I might be wrong are you Tom yeah is that also <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we the same? Is this like a Superboy Prime thing where I'm like punching the universe now? It's like, uh, I got real nerdy on that one. Uh, yeah. Was that also Stalker Channing in that movie? That was Kathleen Turner. Kathleen Turner. I didn't see yeah. the movie, but yeah, I just yeah. know the cover of it. Yeah. I had one more. I don't know if anyone ever saw The Omen. Yeah. The original? Yeah. Did you ever see The Omen Part 4? <laughs> I don't think anyone Nope. Has. Okay. Well, I was raised Catholic. So I spent as all good children are. (laughs) I spent a large portion of my formative years being terrified that I was going to go to hell. Okay. So So you took it seriously. (laughs) Yes, it terrified me. I remember one of my cousins told me if you broke a pinky promise, you would go to hell. (laughs) (laughs) They got you so good. (laughs) My older. My older boy cousin and I was just. I remember literally laying in bed and just being racked with worry. But in the Omen Four, um, it's uh, the little girl is a devil in that one, and there's one part where this priest guy is like having a heart attack, and that crazy Omen music is playing, and he's like stumbling down the street, and no one will help him, and in the windows of the shops he's passing are just like religious like 
knickknacks and they all have weird like judging faces <laughs> and they're all like well, yeah, they're staring Catholic. at him as he's dying and it just fucking traumatized me so much when I was a kid. I was like, oh my God, this is what going to hell is like. <laughs> Most scally Virgin Mary I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so crazy. And I think he gets hit by like a wrecking ball or something. What? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. He wait, to, wait. He starts the scene having a heart attack, and they're like, oh, this isn't extreme enough. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking like Looney Tune style wrecking ball. Like Wiley Coyote. I might have made that up. He might have just been walking by a construction site. <laughs> oh, you're just piecing it all together. Only time will tell. We'll have to Google it when after we, we watch Omen 4 for next week. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, being a kid. Wife Jessica, I have an idea. What's that, husband Dustin? As you know, we love movies. Yes, dear, I know. But we also love podcasts. I'm aware, my love. And then there's this other part of us that really loves movie commentary tracks. Get to the point, sweetheart. Well, if we made a movie podcast slash commentary track hybrid audio program, it would certainly be the best married couple movie podcast slash commentary track hybrid audio program on the internet, right? Without doubt. But whatever would we call it? We are the Popcorn Poops. Popcorn Poops is a weekly podcast hosted by married couple Dustin and Jessica Kramer. That's us. Each week we choose a movie based on a monthly theme and then we sit down and record a syncable commentary track as we watch the movie. But what makes Popcorn Poops special is that you don't have to sync up our podcast to enjoy the show. So you can listen to us like you would any other standalone podcast. On our show, we like to talk about theory, story structure, genre conventions, and trivia with a healthy dose of dick jokes. Gotta have the dick jokes. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play Music. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram for frequent updates about the show, including our weekly movie still identification game. Visit us on the web at popcornpoops.com. We'll be waiting for you, and not in a creepy way. Okay, kind of a creepy way. Yeah, okay, fair warning. All right, so any final thoughts on Meet the Apple Gates, though, before we wrap ourselves up here? Nah. That's it? Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check, double check here. Spoke oh, piece. They said the name of the movie in the movie. Uh, which oh, they said it twice. They, they did. said Because uh, he says, um, meet the Applegate kids. And he's like really angry about it. Yeah. And then there's something else like. Later at that, the end. That was the trailer shot too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It, oh, and and the movie ends with a, with a hilarious joke about how all the people of this town have cancer now. <laughs> yeah. And are bald. Because they go to Brazil to help them. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, the radiation's terrible. And they take their hats off and they have like sparse comb overs. Yeah, pretty, pretty sour. Pretty <laughs> sour. Yeah. That was the way they wanted it to. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, this was uh, so weird. But uh, yeah, that's it. We watched Meet the Apple Gates from 1991 and uh, yeah, fucked us up. <laughs> real bad. Yeah, I'm traumatized. Yeah, real bad. Um, Gray. Thanks for coming on again. Uh, actually, it's Tom now. Oh. I, 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 I am Tom. Yeah, that's why I said welcome at the start of the show. It makes sense now. <laughs> it's true. It's been true the whole time. <laughs> but uh, but uh, thank you for having you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for having all of us. Always a pleasure. Welcome. It was, it was great. I, 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 you know, I love doing this even, you know, <laughs> with this bizarro movie that traumatized me as a kid. Yeah, no, we should, uh, we should, do, we should do it again sometime. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. um, if you'd like more information on Second Class Cinema, you can head on to Facebook, facebook.com slash secondclasscinema. You can listen to our program on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, secondclasscinema.com, and followingfilms.com. And we're done. <laughs> and That's have over. a good day. Have Woo! a good night. Yep. Good night, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>